Um, my name is Silas Adekunle. I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, Reach Robotics, where we're combining robotics, gaming, and augmented reality to create a, a new form of play, basically. In terms of the, the process of how I became uh, an engineer, well, I, I went to university and studied robotics as a degree, and there are other related degrees or, or courses that you can you can study, things like uh, animatronics or or mechanical engineering, uh, and then do do some I guess minors in other fields like programming and electronics. Uh, but I did pure robotics, which covered mechanical engineering, electronics, uh, programming, uh, and some computer science elements. And and my personal interests are biology as well. And before that, I'd uh, gone to I guess secondary school. I studied maths, uh, computing, and uh, physics. And before that, I had an interest in in the sciences and, and maths and electronics in general. Um, as a robotics engineer, I mean, coming straight out of university, you could and depending on the company and and where you are, it does vary. You could start from you know twenty eight to to thirty thousand pounds. So that's uh, I think uh, fifty to sixty in the US. Um, and then as you start to specialize though, so if you specialize in artificial intelligence, for example, you can get some ridiculously high, high numbers because you've got some, 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 some subsections of that field that are in very high demand. Um, so looking at, you know, 100,000, 200,000, and then if you're really, really good and you're the best in the world, um, it's, you know, it's almost limitless because you can not just command salary but also say um, equity or options in some of the uh, hot uh, tech startups. For, for myself in terms of what I do during the day this is uh, so it is different from from pure engineering because uh, I'm, I'm currently the CEO of, of a startup so my focus is more of First of all, evaluate where we are, look at the, the strategy that we've, we've planned together as a team and make sure that we're on track for that. And that will be looking at um, what our product roadmap looks like. For example, um, talking with the stakeholders in the company, so that's from investors to our customers, making sure that what we're creating aligns with um, everyone's uh, expectations. And then third is, is a focus on, on people and that's making sure that the team have what they need and in terms of resources and, and manpower and then the, that allows them to do their work the best way that they can do it. And you know I love, I love products uh, myself so usually involved in, in product research and looking at what other people are doing and how we can do better as well. As a company I've created something unique that no one has done before. So you're bound to have uh, unknown unknowns down the road, and that's from logistics to manufacturing to getting the message right for the product. Um, and you know the greatest feeling is when you get that get that right. When you go from an idea to actually executing it, to actually making it happen, to seeing it in the hands of a customer and the the eyes of the customer lighting up because. And that's the point where you've created something that no one else has and wouldn't have existed without without you. And there are many ways to to achieve that, right? Um, in any job where you're creating, or even in in in, in personal life when you're just uh, blessing other people with your time. Um, if you don't necessarily take take the entrepreneurial path after studying in robotics or fields related to robotics. There are so many subsections of the industry. Um, healthcare, you could look at robots that are doing surgery, for example, or you could look at robots that are consumer robots, so things that go into people's homes. I'm working as an engineer, so mechanical engineering or um, purely electronics engineer or someone that just programs. Um, you, could, you could have a, a top level kind of AI uh, engineering. We have some unique roles as well, like a character engineer, because as as the robot starts to interact with our lives, we expect them to have more personality. So there are lots of different uh, facets or different aspects of the robotics industry that you could decide to go into if you 
if you if you choose that path. The trend for robotics engineers um, it's it's going to keep penetrating more and more aspects uh, of our of our life. You know, before it was it was just about coding, um, so just the software side of it. Now it's about the combination of both, which is where robotics really comes to comes to play. So in the next uh, few years, what we're going to see is higher and higher demands for um, AI specific roles. You know that that's quite quite big uh, right now. But then longer term, as robotics itself starts to take off, it's it's the understanding, and we're seeing that already. The understanding of of the whole picture. So it's not enough to just be a, a mechanical engineer because the systems all have to work together. And that's where robotics engineers really come into their own because they're in a unique position to be a, 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 a jack of all trades, if you could say.